Harlan's through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through, goes to the sky, what a goal! Kieran, a draw here in the box of Athletic Grounds. Um, not the result maybe you wanted, but at least you're still unbeaten. Yeah, I think for both teams, I had chances to win it. And uh, I suppose at different times during the game, some would be happy to take the one point, and other times you were hoping you'd get the two. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 not a brilliant day, but it's still a good day. And reflecting on it, was it a point lost or a point drop, a point dropped or a point gained, or how do you how do you reflect on it? It's hard to sort of say. Like they got a penalty, and you always sort of feel like, but with the practice we've had with penalties, you'd be sort of glad that we saved one. It's so like Blaine was excellent today. I think from start to finish, anyway, um, myself and Andrew were like were probably our top players, but. I think over time, like they would probably sort of look at like you know we lost a bit of a lead, like just messed about with the ball. Yeah, they got two points before half time, which sort of like you know was like a, a good moment for them. But like we should have been holding on to possession, and then near the end, after like being saved the, the penalty, we had numerous chances to kick the the winner, like and we didn't take it. But those are the way things go. So, but like at least we never stopped. The boys worked really hard. A lot of good defensive work. You know, on both sides, like you'd great blocks by Joey and Charlotte. The uh, turbo blocked one on the line too. So, you know, it was it was a good day's work. But you know, like I said, both both teams will look at a lot of stuff they need to clean up on. And a lot of defensive work here in his four games now with a clean sheet, and um, five if you include the McKenna Cup semi final. So that's that's obviously good to have. And Blaine, obviously five clean sheets now. That's that's positive. Yeah, no, definitely. Like the defense has been doing well, and like you know, today was a bigger test. Just looking at some of the games that we've had, uh, but you know, as everybody can see from the the scores in Division Two, like it's just just no such thing as a given. Like you know, you have Calvin snapping on the heels, same with Fermana. You know, like just a lot of high scores there today. Like and teams still trying to sort of claw their way up. So it's a lot to do. Um, tough game coming up up in uh, Brewster Park, which is never easy. Despite again what, what people might think, um, you know, Fermana just very lucky clipped away a point I think it was by Cork and you know so you know we, we have a tough week ahead of us now getting everybody sort of uh, rejuvenated during the week recovery and, and just getting a focus again on Fermanagh. And that, that's the first of a, a three game sort of Ulster um, team years are playing you said Donegal today Fermanagh next and then Calvin there's nearly a mini Ulster league inside Division 2. Yeah it's like you know Division 1 and Division 2 definitely have their <laughs> Uh, the Ulster teams, but listen, like, we know like there's not going to be much asking or given like on any of those games, and all the games are extremely tight. You know, like, like the, there's not much in them, especially with those Ulster teams are com- concerned. You know, like for Manor, we've been unlucky; they just got caught for two goals against Donegal last week. But like up until that point, like you know, they were well in the game and probably been disappointed in the second half. Like I think they missed about one five, one six. You know, so um, you know, like we, we know we're going to have a a big uh, job ahead of us. But we'll look at the video and see where we can improve and what we did well and try and repeat that. Andrew Mernon has started two games now. Um, Kieran Rain O'Neill got back in for his first minutes of 2024. The you're just getting men back, hopefully at the right time, and everybody getting game time and everybody flying fit. Yeah, look, that's what we're hoping. You know, Rain scored an unbelievable point there when he came on. Like only he can, but he knows he, he wants more in the legs and he wants to push on, and that's what we want from him too. Andrew had two games and I thought he was outstanding today. He, like he worked his socks off as normal. So Torbo thought it was excellent. Just like Donny Gall's tight defence. Like you're not going to get much space in there, but he never stopped working for us. Same with Young Ash and Kennedy. You know, um, so yeah, we've. We have different people putting their hands up, like you know, Super came off the bench was unlucky again not to get us a couple, so you know, a lot of work to do, but there's a lot of green shoots there as well. Listen, we're a wee bit disappointed, I suppose. You know, we uh, obviously the penalty is a very good goal scoring opportunity, and the second one off the post, like so. Either of them, probably in, in the context of the game, it was a tough old battle out there. Um, but at the same time, we found ourselves in a bad situation as well, where we had to respond uh, and get uh, get an equalising point. So, um, my own assessment of it would be that it was uh, it was a great game for us, a uh, good game for our ma as well. I think we know a bit more about our own lads. Um, it was a tough old battle there and I think 
pressure situations came to bear on both teams uh, um, during the game at different periods. So, um, so plenty, plenty of learnings in the game, and uh, at least we're not going down the road beat. I think Ryan got caught with his back to the goal, and then Stephen got caught with the ball over the top, like you know. And listen, we knew our man were going to do that. You know, once they get the ball from a kick out, they want to move it and they want to send it long. They did it on a number of occasions today. So that was a, that was a, a tough one. You look at the scoreboard then the whole way through the game. You know, we were one five to ten points at one stage, and you're thinking if you take the goal out of it, you know, you're in a really good spot. But anyway, listen, these games, uh, Ulster competition, um, you know, they always take a life of their own, and you have to just find a way uh, to stay in the game. I think there was a lot of physicality, and I think there was a lot of questions asked tactically, and I think there was a lot of pressure cooker moments where fellas either did or didn't deal, deal with it, you know. Um, so again, that's why I say um, it's probably a good game for us, uh, and a good game for our ma. It'll, uh, I think it'll sharpen up both camps, and hopefully now um, we can just push on from here. If we won here today, you know, we were in a very strong position to go on in the division. If our I won the same and I think I think that wasn't lost on the players I think there was there was that sense to it that, that there was a lot on the line um, and both ended up with nothing at the heel of the hunt we're both uh, still in the dogfight now so um, that's that's the way it is but um, but yeah listen we'll have to go back have a good look at it now and um, and try and take the positives and, and, and the learnings as well we're both we're both still there we've had a tough game a tough battle um, you know and we just have to reflect on that and, and get ready now for Louth next weekend. Arma and ourselves, I think they were a point ahead of us in score difference coming into the game, and they were basically doing the same thing as we were doing. Um, you know, so you're always looking at those results and you're thinking, you know, like Arma, you know, they took the Ulster final last year to penalties. You know, um, the last couple of years they've been very unlucky in, in the All Ireland series. So it's great for us. Like it's it's for, it's progress for us. Um, it's a step forward for us. We need now we need to try and find a way to win these games. Our man got their kickouts away very well, um, and we struggled to get pressure on their kickouts in the first half. That had a big impact uh, in the game from our point of view. Um, you know, we had to make some adjustments on that. We had to uh, make a maybe two or three different tweaks on that to try and rescue that back again a bit from our own point of view and we managed to do that in the second half those balls then did start going into contest uh, and 50-50 and that, that had a big impact in terms of us getting a foothold in the game in the second half uh, and then it's about managing the game and controlling the game like we did that very well in periods but also we took shots from places we should have took shots from and you know so there, it's a mixed bag but um, but no that wasn't part of the plan it's just sometimes it's, it's more difficult than others they were well organised for it and well tuned for it um, but at the same time the positive is we found a way to, to flip it in the second half even Rian O'Neill's point which was a, a, an amazing point like you know we had possession of the ball like we just won it in the middle of the park uh, I think it was Patter maybe and a, a, a loose hand pass and, and we get caught so you're thinking to yourself Jesus like we should have been pushing on to try and win the game and you get you get sucker punched then at the other end so th there was a lot going on I, I, I don't know how you felt about the game but I think it was one of those games where there was a lot going on there was a lot of crowd interaction it was physical there was a lot of unforced errors there was some good scores so from that point of view that uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it was a proper Ulster derby. It didn't, it didn't let anybody down. I don't think in that regard. We are trying to bring a group of players together. We're trying to build fitness. We're trying to build a game plan uh, and confidence. Uh, and so, when you come to Armagh and you're, all of that stuff is on the line, it's it's great that we didn't lose. It's disappointing we didn't push on and win the game. I feel with with what we had in the game, we had a, a lot of possession and we had a lot of control. You know, um, but um, but we didn't. And so, you know, we're we're still not there yet. We're still a work in progress and that's where we need to keep on going over the next number of months while we head for that match against Derry and Celtic Park. Yeah, so Michael, uh, share the spoils here in the box of Athletic Grounds. How do you reflect on the game? Ah, listen, it was a tight one. It was, it was full, of, full of chaos and full of end-to-end -end stuff. I think both teams in general will be happy enough to have got the, the game against each other and got it underneath their belt. Um, I think most, both, both teams would also make cases of... of uh, I want to take the one, you know, and probably deserve it so. But I think, and the, there's, on the scheme of things, I think it probably was just about this fair result, you know. And a bit of chaos. We've come to expect that really with our Monday goal games down through the years. And you know what? It's refreshing to see. Being honest, I'm sure from the coach's point of view, they would have. Uh, they'll be looking for the percentages and they'll be looking for for uh, for things to improve. But I think from a spectator, even from a neutral, it was just exciting to see two teams going at it and maybe 
not afraid to do things a wee bit more and go for that kick pass or, or go for that run against two men and yeah and, you know sometimes it probably resulted in, in the ball being coughed up or turned over but other times it resulted on you know um, it resulted on just, just something that was a bit more fun to watch you know and the fact both teams still after they unbeaten and still sit joint top of the table that's they both be leaving here happy I think so I think so by and there I think when they really sat away I, I, no doubt both managers will go come away and think geez we could we had it on that we would have won the game and you know they, both both teams could have made cases for it but it still leaves them top of the league it still leaves them with three winnable games to finish the, the, the year on in terms of the league and they can start focusing on championship then and do you think we're going to see these two teams in Coke Park in a couple of weeks time for a league final I never even thought that far down. Uh, everything would point towards it, you know. With them league finals now, in terms of the Ulster Championship coming so far up, I don't know really what they what they really mean as much anymore. You know, um, the difference if there was a bit of a turnaround towards your Ulster Championship, but the Ulster Championship coming thick and fast. Donegal coming fairly heavy for for, for Derry, and then I suppose Armagh have a more favourable side of the draw. You know, I just don't see, you know, if they do come together, what really what value will be in it for both of them? They'll achieve their goal, which is to try and get out of the division, and they'll be focusing their attentions on the on the, on the championship. Uh, so Kyle, we're after witnessing a draw here in the box athletic rounds, one nine to twelve points. Just speaking straight after the game, what's what's your immediate thoughts? Was a draw for a result? Probably. Um, so quickly after the game, you probably have to think that Armagh would be happier with their first half than, than their second half. Um, Tim McGuinness, I'm sure, would have had a few words to say um, to up the intensity and attitude of the Donegal players in the, in the second half, which they did in the first ten minutes. I know they kicked the first the last three in, in the first half and the first three at the start of the second half but it seemed to be that they come out their press was more man to man in the second half where it was a bit more zonal in the first half and I think Blaine Hughes was able to get his kick outs away and was able to get Armagh up the pitch a lot quicker where in the second half that wasn't the case so probably a, a draw was a fair reflection I know Charlie Oog probably be kicking himself why he didn't kick it over because he had two opportunities to do so he went to uh, um, to fist it over but look both teams will be happy with the one point neither team will really have want, wanted to lose the game obviously so um, I would say we'll, we'll probably be seeing both teams in, in the league final Yeah I was going to ask you about that actually because the way the thing's going both teams still unbeaten in the league so probably going to see them in the league final would you give either, either team the edge coming out of the day heading into that league final I know we're, we're, they haven't made it yet and we're a couple of weeks down the line but is anybody leaving here with an edge or is it going to be maybe a completely new game when they meet hopefully a few weeks down the line well, I was thinking that today we might find out a bit more about both teams in regards to sometimes when you go to the league final and both teams are promoted it might it's sort of maybe one team wins a bit handier than the other and because both teams are happy to, to get promoted to Division 1 but that might not be the case both teams will be you know with Jim McGuinness coming back in I think there was a, a few words along the line uh, at half time which, which adds to, to the space of the game and, and that's what we want to see a bit of passion and, and hunger but um, I wouldn't say either team maybe Donegal with their second half performance having the penalty saved as well I know that as Oshin Gallon, it, it seemed to be that he was good. looking that side. He seemed to open up his body. Um, I think Blaine Keyes read it really well. It was a tough, it was a tough save. It was well into the corner, but um, maybe Donegal just be slightly happier with the way they, they finished the second half. You know that, that I know that Armagh made a, a number of changes, and sometimes that, that can stop the fluidity of a team. And, and look, both teams would be happy enough to, to, to not come, not to lose the game. I seen uh, Jim McGuinness and Geezer hugging at the full time whistle, so they, they made up anyway. But you mentioned the Blaine Hughes save from the penalty, and it was one of the, I suppose, the big talking points coming out of here. Another one was the goal in the first half, um, the Andrew Mernon goal. I'll talk to you about the goal, but I'll talk to you about Kieran Mackin's pass as well, yeah. because it was a Blaine Hughes kick out to Mackin, kick over the top into Mernon on a goal. It, it's a simple game sometimes. It is a simple game, but that's where I'm talking about Donegal's press in the first half, where it was zoning, so Blaine Hughes was able to get them out a wee bit handier and then when Donegal have, I counted Donegal had seven men one stage on a kick out inside the 45 if you're not stopping that and they're getting away there's going to be room out the back door that's inevitable and the way football has gone there's so many good kick passes out there and, and I think it was Kieran Mackin's ball over the top I think Donegal should have had cut it out there was an opportunity I think neither player, Ray McHugh was one of them. Um, Brendan McCall might have been the other one. So it found his way to Andrew Mernon and he took the goal uh, brilliantly. It was a great finish. And he, he was really good for Armagh today. He's the thorn in the side. He, his directness, you know, is just, there's no bones about it. He's direct. He can get up for the ball. He, he, was, he impressed me today.
I think it was a, a tactic that Arma used right from the throw in Andrew Murn on the edge of the square and I suppose when you have somebody like that you have to use them and it was good from an Arma perspective as well to see Alexa Ray and O'Neill getting in getting on the score sheet as well today that was his first minutes of 2024 so future looking bright for Arma down, down this year Yeah absolutely and a lovely cup of the year from Ray and O'Neill when he, he must have been getting a wee bit of jip along the line but no, I, I love to see that kind of stuff you know that wee bit of People, you know, in, in the GA circles, everybody's so rigid and you're afraid to say the wrong thing or people's afraid to celebrate. You know, Dublin didn't celebrate gold for a while, you know. I, I think all that kind of passion and, you know, not play acting, but all just, you know, interaction, I think it helps the game, do you know what I mean? And it was a fabulous score from Ray and started. It must have started three or four foot outside the post and he threw it back lovely. But Arma, look, there'll be positives from both teams. Both teams will go away and analyse the video, and, and there'll be there'll be things that they'll they'll want to change if they do meet each other in, in the league final in a few weeks. And it was a big weekend for Arma. Obviously, Jarth Burns coming in as the new president of the GAA. Um, I suppose as as an Ulster man, um, it's the first I think from Peter Quinn in nineteen ninety six. So it's a big thing for Ulster football getting a, a, a president. Absolutely. And look, uh, I don't I don't know Jarth um, personally, but I've listened to him speak a number of times. Uh, he says all the right things, and I think that it's a good thing for the GAA. I think he'll want to. When his tenure comes to an end, he'll, he'll want to have, you know, made his mark. That's what all presidents want to do. And the first thing he's done is drew up a, a bit of a task committee. And the names that I think that I've seen today, the likes of Eamon Fismarch and um, Jim Gavin, um, Colin Collins, you know, men that have had, had a great stronghold in the game, I'm, uh, people with a lot of... Um, Good thoughts are, are in the right places, so that's that's one good positive that he's done already in a short space of time. So I think we're going to see a good tenure from um, Jarth. Kicks this one in. Oh, that's 